بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد in the last lesson of عقيدة الوسطية we're talking about the sifat of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the attributes of his attributes that are uh, sifat ذاتية um, and we're talking about the wajh, the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I came across some very beneficial uh, statements of Shaykh Salib bin, uh, Shaykh uh, bin Uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala regarding this issue and his explanation of Aqidat al-Wasatiyah. And he mentioned this important qaida that we have to continually to go back to, this important principle. And this is also will... Um, affirm for us and explain and give us an understanding of the other attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala re- related to his that like uh, his eyes and his hands subhanahu wa ta'ala so going back to the wajh going back to the face this qaida is 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 uh, established here and it applies to the other attributes of the Dhatiyat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Qala Shaykh Salih bin uh, Shaykh uh, bin Uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala he said about the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa yabaka wajuhu rab, uh, rabbika where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about everything on the day of judgment will be destroyed. Everything will, will be destroyed except for the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Shaykh, Sal, uh, Shaykh bin Uthameen, he says, Al-wajh ma'nahu ma'loom. Lakin, lakin kayfiyatihi majhul. La na'lam kayf wajhillah azza wa jal. كسائر صفاته لكننا نؤمن بأن له وجها موصوفا بجلال والإكرام وموصوفا بالبهاء والعظمة والنور نور نور العظيم حتى قال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام حجابه نور لو كشفه لأهركت سبحات وَجْهُهُ مَا أَنْتَهَا إِلَيْهِ بَسَرُهُ مِنْ خَلْكِهِ So, Ibn Uthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, the, the face, it's, it's known. The meaning of a wajh, it's known. It's known in the Arabic language, and it's understood. And he said, however, the how of it is majhul. And this is the same statement, this... Qa'ida. This statement comes from the statement of Imam Malik, where he was asked about istawa. You know, where Allah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-Rahman ala ars istawa. And then someone in the audience, they asked, Ya Imam, kayf istawa? You know, how does he ascend? You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ar-Rahman ala ars istawa. Uh, the most merciful, he ascends, uh, he ascends above his throne. And then Imam Malik was asked about how is this, how does he ascend? How is this ascension? Um, and he responded by saying, Al istawa ma'lum. You know, istawa, the meaning of it in Arabic is known. Istawa is ma'lum, to rise. It's known in the Arabic language. Lakin kayfiyatuhu majhul, but the how of it is unknown. وَسُوَلْ anhu bid'a, And he said, and to ask about it is an innovation. To ask about these kind of issues are innovations. And this is the same statement that Ibn Uthimeen is saying. So it shows us this, this qaida, this principle of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that we don't ask how. We accept the text as they are. We accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine attributes as they are, and we don't make a tashbih, we don't make a resemblance to his creation, not like the mujassima and the mushabbiha, those people who make a resemblance uh, between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine attributes and the attributes of his creation. So Ibn Uthaymeen, he said, uh, that we don't know the how of the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, Allah the Almighty. 
uh, similar to the rest of his attributes. However, we believe that he has a face, which is described by majesty and honor, bil jalali wal ikram, and that it is described by splendor or beauty and greatness and light and in, 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 in a very um, you know powerful light nur and then he said which is witnessed in the statement of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam alayhi salatu wasalam where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the hadith where he said that uh, his cover is radiance or fire, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, his hijab, it is radiance or fire. If he uncovers it, then the brightness of his countenance will burn up the creature up to the end of his sight. So that's the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describing to us about the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we accept that. As Ahl sunnah we believe in that. That's what distinguishes Ahl sunnah from Ahl bid'ah is we take and accept the text of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we believe in those texts and we don't um, try to distort the meaning of those texts or negate the meaning of those texts or make a resemblance between uh, the characteristics, the divine characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are described in those texts, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with uh, a resemblance to his creatures. Then the Shaykh, he also mentioned another benefit, which is very important for us to, he summarized the Aqidah, the creed of Ahl Sunnah. He said here, Rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, وَبِنَا عَلَى هَذَا نقول. And he said, and based upon this, we say, this is, very, this is imperative for us because this is the creed. This is going back to what Shaykh al-Islam is making bayan of, which is the aqidah of Ahl sunnah So he said, we say, مِنْ عَقِيدَتِنَا أَنَّنَا نُثْبِتُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ وَجْهٍ حَقِيقًا وَنَخْذُهُ مِنْ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَيَبَقَ وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ So he said, so based upon this, we say that our belief is that we affirm that Allah has a face, a, a, a real face. And we take this from the statement of the Almighty when he says, وَيَبَقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ That the face of your Lord will con continue to exist or, or be in existence basically after everything else has been destroyed and His face possesses uh, the majesty and honor. And then Ibn Uthameen, he said, وَنَقُولْ بِأَنَّ هَذَا الْوَجْهِ لَا يُمَاثِلْ أَوْجِ الْمَخْلُقِينَ This is very important here. He said, and then we say that this face, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's face, does not resemble any of the faces of His creatures. So that proves that Ahl Sunnati will jama'a, no matter what the Ashairah, what the Ma'atila, and these other groups, the Ahbash and others who fit under the Ma'atila and fit under the, the same, have the same creed as the Ashairah basically, that they, when they claim that Ahl Sunnah is from the Mujassimah, this right here is a refutation of what they're saying. Because as bin Uthaymeen, says, and as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah before him said, and as Ahlul Sunnah before them have said, that we say that Allah has a face, but it does not resemble any of his, uh, the faces of his creatures. لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ And this is in accordance with the statement of the Almighty where he said, there is nothing that resembles him. Laysa kamithli hi shayun. Then Ben Ufimin he said, Wa najhalu kayfiya ta hadha al waj li kolahi ta'ala wa la yuhitun bihi alma. So then he mentioned 
rahimahullah ta'ala, which is just beautiful organization of his arguments, which just um, with knowledge and evidences from the Qur'an show us and and tartib and order that he uh, refutes those people who claim that Ahl Sunnah is from the Mujassimah or that uh, Ahl Sunnah makes any resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, his divine attributes and the attributes of his creation or any of those other false claims. So he mentioned in the, the last portion of the statement, he said, And we are ignorant of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's face is. And he said, and this is in accordance with the, with the statement of the Almighty where he said that their knowledge uh, does not encompass everything. So it lets us know there that our knowledge is limited, unlike the knowledge of uh, Al-Alim, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Alim, that He is the all-knowledgeable. He, he, his knowledge encompasses everything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Ibn Uthaymeen, he mentioned something else very important. He said, فَإِنْ حَوَّلَ أَحَدْ أَنْ يَتَصَوَّرَ هَذِهِ الْكَيْفِيَ بِقَلْبِهِ أَوْ أَنْ يَتَحَدِّثَ عَنْهَا بِلِسَانِهِ قُلْنَا إِنَّكَ مُبْتَدِعٌ ضَالٌ قَاعِلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُ so in this statement, Ibn uh emphasizes and reinforces what he said. He said, then if someone strives to picture in their mind or in their heart or to speak about how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's face is, he said, then we say, that, that you are, meaning this person who does this, is an innovator, uh, misguided, a misguided innovator. And they are a person who speaks about Allah without knowledge. So it is not possible that we can describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other than how He described Himself. We don't have this knowledge. Allah did not give us this knowledge. That is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine knowledge. So we accept the text as they are, and we tr- don't go beyond those texts and beyond what the Salaf Asari, radiAllahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, how they understood the text and how they uh, understood these divine attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Moving on to the next uh, two attributes, which refer to the Dhatia, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودِ يَادُ اللَّهِ مَغْلُولًا غُلَّتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَلُعِنُوا بِمَا قَالُوا بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْسُوتَانِ يُنْفِقُوا كَيْفَ يَشَاءُ وَقَبْلَ هَذَا مَا مَعْنَكَ أَنْ تَسْجَدَ لِمَا خَلَقْتُ بِيَدَيْهِ وَقَوْلُهُ وَاسْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُونِنَا وَقَوْلُهُ وَحَمَلْنَا وَحَمَلْنَاهُ عَلَى ذَاتِ الْأَلْوَاحِ وَدُسْر تَجْرِي بِأَعْيُونِنَا جَزَاءً لِمَنْ كَانَ كُفِرْ وَقَوْلُهُ وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مُحَبَّةً مِنِّي لِتُسْنَعَ عَلَى عَيْنِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in these, attribu- uh, in these verses in the Qur'an, He said about the, the Jews, what they said about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the first uh, verse He said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, What prevents you from prostrating yourself to the one whom I have created with both my hands. This is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the Jews say Allah's hand is tied up, meaning He does not give and spend of His bounty. Be their hands tied up, and be they a curse for what they uttered. Nay, both His hands are widely outstretched. He spends of His bounty as He wills. 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So wait patiently, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa for the decision of your Lord, for verily you are under our eyes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we carried him on a ship made of planks and nails, floating under our eyes, a reward for him who had been rejected. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And I endured you with love for me, in order that you may be brought up under my eye. All of those verses, they establish for us two divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, hands, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has eyes. And the same principle applies, as we mentioned before, the principle that Shaykh al-Islam mentioned, the Ahl sunnah they affirm what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for himself in the Qur'an and what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirms for him in the authentic sunnah. And that, so we affirm those, those attributes that are mentioned there, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions regarding his divine attributes and with his mentioning about his face as we mentioned and his hands and eyes and again the same qaida applies as Shaykh al-Islam mentioned first and foremost in the text when he says we affirm those attributes as Allah and his messenger والسلام, affirm them without uh, tahrif, you know, without distorting, without tamthil, without making a resemblance, without uh, ta'til, wala tishbi, etc. So we affirm those attributes for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without distorting them, without making a resemblance between Him and His creation, and without negating those attributes, uh, and without reinterpreting or changing them from their, their correct meaning without any and all forms of ilhad as we mentioned before the types of il- ilhad this is the aqeed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be from Ahl Sunnah and to raise us up amongst the rakes of the righteous and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from kulli su wa makru sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad